Good morning. Good morning. Again with the microphone on. You don't have to say good morning again anyway, but, but I'll say it to you because you may not have heard me. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Jason Walter, and it was my privilege for the last four and a half years to, uh, to minister to Evelyn uh, when she was in the nursing home. She was a wonderful lady, as all of you know, and as obviously a testament to that, you're here to not only pay your respects, but hopefully to celebrate with all of us the resurrection that is now Evelyn's through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because of him, days like this don't have to be all sadness, although there's a lot of sadness to, to be felt today. But in the midst of it all, we also can have joy to know that, that Evelyn is now home with her Savior, that at the resurrection her legs will be restored and she will run and jump and do all of those things that she did in her younger days and she'll do them again forever and ever. And so it's that hope that we have in Christ that gives us comfort and peace on days like this. The order of service for today is printed out for you in the bulletins that you should have received. Uh, we do have large print bulletins available for those who are unable to see the, the words in the hymnal when we sing the hymns. I know those words can get kind of small at times. Uh, so we do have a large print bulletin that has all of the lyrics printed out for you in much larger font. If you need that, uh, you can just get the attention of our head usher and, and flag him down and he can get that for you. Our opening hymn is a processional hymn, uh, so at this time I will invite you to rise as we sing hymn 739, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Once again, our liturgy is printed out for you in the bulletins. 
We begin by remembering our own baptisms into Christ when these words were spoken over us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In holy baptism, Evelyn was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness, which covered all her sin. As St. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The intro that was chosen for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We now speak responsibly the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks to you for the loving kindness you showed to Evelyn and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading that was chosen for today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people." And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading chosen for today comes from Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. These verses from chapter 8. Paul writes, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand now out of reverence for the gospel and prepare for it by speaking the Lenten verse printed out in your bulletins from 2 Timothy chapter 2. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. We now sing our hymn of the day, Amazing Grace, hymn 744.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the good shepherd of the sheep, who gathers his lambs into his arms and carries them home. Amen. As I was preparing for today's message, the one word that kept running through my mind was the word home. If ever there was someone for whom today's opening hymn applied, it was Evelyn. Now, she called a few places home during her life, even when she didn't always want to. But in her ever positive way, she tried to think of them as home in the best way she could. But for my conversations with her, it was obvious that she knew that we are just strangers here and that heaven is our home. And she looked forward to that day when she could finally call it her home. In the meantime, while she waited for that day to come, she was content to know that God was always with her, just as he promised he would be. Last week, for example, when uh, Evelyn's family was visiting with her in the hospital and visiting hours were almost up, Evelyn told them it was okay to leave because God was with her. And so she wouldn't be alone. In the last chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus promised that he would be with his people always to the very end of the age. Well, Evelyn believed that promise and was always comforted by it. By faith, Evelyn knew that what Paul wrote in today's New Testament reading was true. That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation would be able to separate her from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, her Lord. And so last week when she passed through the valley of the shadow of death, she did it in the strength of the Lord, knowing that even then her good shepherd was with her. God had promised her that nothing could ever separate her from the love of Christ, not even death. And so today we can rejoice to know that nothing ever did separate Evelyn from the love of Christ. Even now she continues to dwell in his perfect love and bask in God's glorious presence. And we give thanks to God because we also have that promise to cling to as we make our own journeys as life, or through life as strangers in this world. It's that promise from God that enables us to take each day as it comes and live it to the best of our ability to the glory of God and for the good of our neighbor. That's certainly what Evelyn tried to do. In her later years, Evelyn showed her love for God by loving her fellow residents. She considered herself to be a kind of counselor for them, an open ear and a caring heart for anyone who needed it. Whatever she could do to help carry the burdens of others, that's what Evelyn wanted to do. She knew that God had blessed her and she wanted to share his blessings with others. Evelyn did all of those things because her relationship with the Lord was always the most important thing for her. And I saw that every time that I visited her. Even though her Lord was always with her, I had the joyful privilege of bringing him to her in a special way. Christ came to her on those days in the way that he promises to always come to us and be present in our lives through the word that she heard and in the body and blood that she received. And it was through those gifts of grace that Christ continued to draw near to Evelyn in a specific and tangible way. And when he did, he gave her a glimpse of what it will be like on that glorious day to come. When, as it says in Revelation 21, the dwelling place of God will finally be with man. Every time that Evelyn received our Lord's Supper, she experienced a foretaste of that heavenly feast to come and was united to God in a miraculous and wonderful way. And that's what God has always wanted for us, to be united to us. Unfortunately, the original sin of our first parents destroyed that perfect unity that God intended to have with us. 
even though it was his desire to dwell among us personally and uh, 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 closely, he couldn't do it. Not while the chasm caused by the sin of our first parents still continued to separate us from his holiness. But since God did create us to love us and be with us, he refused to let anything come between us and him. To make things right and to enable us to be reconciled to God once more, he sent his son to take our sins upon himself and suffer the full penalty for them. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth to be the innocent Lamb of God that does take away the sins of the world. And it was his sinless sacrifice that rescued us from the death and condemnation that our sins deserved. As some of you know, right now we're in the season of the church year called Lent. And it's during this time of year that we talk a lot about this sacrifice that Christ offered for us. But in a few weeks, this time of somber reflection and repentance will come to an end. And we will celebrate once more the glorious resurrection of our Lord. And when we do, we're not just celebrating His resurrection, we also celebrate our own resurrections. And the reason we can do that is because of God's promise. He said that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so also will all be raised up who fall asleep in his grace. That's the gospel message of Easter and the promise that gives us comfort and peace, even on dark and terrible days like this one. In fact, that's all that a funeral sermon is. It's an Easter sermon, just preached on a different day. And that Easter message for you today is the sure and certain hope that you have that our dear sister in Christ is alive because she has been raised to new and everlasting life. She now lives in that perfect paradise that was prepared for her by her good shepherd. That's now her home. And someday by God's grace through faith, it'll be our home too. And when we get there, we'll not only be united to Christ, once and for all, we'll also be reunited with all of the saints, like Evelyn, who have gone on before us. The reason we have that promise to look forward to is because Christ died for us and rose again on Easter morning. And that's why it's appropriate that we consider our days on this planet to be nothing more than a time of wandering, a journey through the valleys and hills of this world as we continually walk with the Lord and await the day when he will bring us to our glorious and final destination. Now to be sure, as we continue on our earthly journeys with him, he gives us many blessings to enjoy along the way. Evelyn certainly believed that. And of course, the earthly blessing that she was most grateful for was the family that God gave her. When I visited with her, that often was the topic of our conversation, is what was going on with her family. And when she had the opportunity, she liked bragging about what her family was doing. As I understand it, uh, I was told she really, really enjoyed sitting silently and observing the antics of the grandchildren. And based on some of the pictures I saw, I think she got involved in some of those antics herself. And for those of you watching up in Starbuck, you should know that Evelyn also loved all of you, especially when she could beat you at bingo. Despite being confined to a wheelchair and having to face all kinds of other physical afflictions, Evelyn never let the temporary things of this world get her down. Whenever we'd get together, of course, there was the obligatory, how are you doing today, Evelyn? And she'd always say, I can't complain. And she said she didn't have anything to complain about. And even if she did, who would care? <laughs> but she told me the reason she couldn't complain was because she knew God had given her a good life and that he was always with her. And of course, his greatest gift to her is the one that he has just now fulfilled for her. He has brought her to the new heaven and the new earth, where she now dwells with the multitude of God's people, as he himself 
is in their midst as their God. That's the promise you heard read earlier in today's first reading. And as I read through those words, I, I loved everything that was recorded there, but I was especially struck by a certain phrase uh, as I was reading through it that occurred to me when God's people were, were being described. Uh, these resurrected saints were referred to as God's bride, adorned with his beauty in anticipation of the heavenly wedding feast to come. Now, as all of you know, Evelyn liked being put together. She liked looking like the queen that she was. Well, I love the fact that now she has been eternally put together and is clothed with more beauty than she could have ever imagined. As you know, she hated being without her makeup, but now she is eternally covered in the radiant and majestic glory of Christ himself. Speaking of that glory of Christ, that's what the pall over the casket is all about. It reminds us of the magnificent and holy and pure righteousness of Christ that covered all of us at our baptisms. And that is the righteousness of Christ that made Evelyn eternally glorious in the eyes of God by covering all of her sin. On December 4th, 1938, God indeed did cover Evelyn with his grace. And on that day, he pledged to her that he would keep all of the promises that he was making to her. When he marked her with the sign of the cross, both upon her forehead and upon her heart, he forgave her all her sins and gave to her eternal life. And then he vowed that he would be with her until the very end of the age. And so today, as we remember those baptismal promises made to Evelyn, we also rejoice to remember and to know that God has kept those promises and brought his precious lamb home. As a baptized and believing child of God, Evelyn is now gazing upon God's glorious face and singing praises to him in the midst of his heavenly courts. Evelyn was once asked about the goals that she had, that she still was hoping to see fulfilled someday. And I thought it was funny that one of her goals was to get lucky and win the lottery. Well, you know what? She's done it. And she has received far greater riches beyond anything she could have ever imagined. But she didn't get it because she was lucky. That incomparable prize is now hers because she was baptized into Christ. And as a baptized child of God, Evelyn had his promise that nothing would ever be able to separate her from her Lord. And because we know that our God keeps his promises, that's how we know that she is now safe and sound with him. And God has promised us also that someday we will see her again on the day of our own resurrections. Until that blessed day dawns, may God continue to encourage you with his peace and unite you to one another and to him in his love and comfort you with his sure promises. Your God is with you and he loves you now and forevermore. Amen. As our service continues now with the prayers, you may have noticed that the, they're rather lengthy. So if there is anybody for whom standing is a difficult challenge, you are invited to remain seated. God will hear your prayers just as well seated as he will standing. With that in mind, I invite you to now please rise as you are able. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit us, your chosen people, into one communion in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church, in heaven and on earth, your light and peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that through the gate of death and the grave we may pass with him to our own joyful resurrections. 
In the meantime, be with us who are still in our pilgrimage through this world, walking by faith, and bless us with your Holy Spirit, that he may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. O Lord, give us pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed of all our sins and serve you with loving hands and faithful hearts. Bless all who mourn and give them a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who grieve, that they may have the strength to face the days ahead in the blessed assurance of holy and certain hope and the faithful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have fallen asleep in the faith. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And finally, God of all grace and mercy, we give you thanks for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to bring life and immortality to light, that by his death he has destroyed death, and by his resurrection he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, knowing that nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the Nuke Demitis. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our good shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And because uh, you will be invited to go directly uh, into our fellowship hall to eat, if you're not going over to the cemetery for burial, um, you can go directly in there to eat. Uh, so with that, let's go to our Lord and give thanks for the food we're about to receive. Gracious God, the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. As we gather now for table fellowship and receive the nourishment that we need to carry out the vocations you've entrusted to us, we give you thanks for this food and for all the other gifts with which you have blessed us. Thank you also for the kind and generous hands who have provided this meal to us. As we prepare to receive these earthly blessings, we ask that you would come alongside us and be present among us as we pray together this common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is a recessional hymn, so I would invite you to please remain standing. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is, I'm but a stranger here, hymn 748.